Today we're going to talk about reliability and validity, about collecting data and what that what we can do with that data and how good it is. And so if we consider that this scenario here, if we consider reliability, reliability is all about does your test yield consistent results each time you do it? It's all about consistency. There's several ways we can uh, gauge that. And validity, however, is is your test an actual does it actually measure what it's designed to measure? Okay, so it's like the truthfulness of your test. Is it a good test? Now, both these things, you have to recognize that reliability and, vis and uh, validity is not about measurement error. And like in, in the sense, an error that while recording the data, your the reliability and validity are not talking about this. So that means like the, the researcher like misputs down some information or that there's um, it's actually in the measuring itself that there's like like a typo, like those kinds of mistakes. We're talking about if these tests are done 100% accurately, do the results, are they reliable and are they valid? One form of reliability testing that we can do is when we do a scenario called test and retest. And so you give a test and then you repeat the same test to the same subjects and if it has higher liability, you get the same results, which is what we always desire. So consider this. Consider this in the morning I wake up and I weigh myself on the scale, the bathroom scale, and I weigh 145.8 pounds. So there's my first test. If I get off the test, get off the scale, and then step back on the scale, if my result is exactly the same, then there's high reliability with this measuring device and that there's test retest. I would say this is highly reliable that this this test. However, if I would go on the scale the first time and then get off and get on again and the measurement was different, that's that would give me very low reliability. I would not believe that this test would be very reliable this scale and so that's something that we try to do is we try to have high reliability for a test the challenge though is um, in education is such that imagine if you gave the test the functions of modeling test that you just took and then the following day I gave you the exact same test you guys would all do better on the second day on the second day than you did the first day and so it's hard even though it was the same test and so you have to really be careful of how you execute it. Um, and test retest is all about the re repeatability of a certain experiment or trial of some, some sort. When you're in science class, we often talk about doing re repetition in an experiment. You have to be able to repeat it. That's talking about the reliability in a test retest situation. The other form of reliability that we talk about is parallel form. So imagine you give a test and you repeat it with a different test yet equivalent test you should get the same results if it's higher liability so consider the bathroom scale again if today I stepped on the scale and I went on the black scale and I was 129 pounds 0.3 and then I went over and stood on the gold scale and I got the same one well these are different tests but I got the same result so therefore I would believe it to be highly re reliable Okay, this measuring device is highly reliable, it gives me consistent results. However, if I went on the scales and I went on the second scale and I got two different results, well, in this case, there is low reliability. You want to be able to get the same results each time you do the experiment, even on different forms. So this is parallel forms because you give a different test. So another scenario you consider here is if you think about teachers who give a version A of a test to one section and then the next section they give a version B of the test, well that is, a, is an example of parallel forms where we believe it is reliable and that it is going, even though they're different tests, they're going to produce the same results. Moving on to validity. There's two different kinds of validity that we consider. The first time is called content validity. And so we want to ask, does the measure completely measure what it was intended to measure? And this is actually quite a difficult task. So consider this. Consider we have an elementary school vocabulary 
of words they have to know. And there's 10 easy words, 10 medium words, and 10 hard words, okay? So if this scenario, and if we come along in this test, and I'm going to give two different vocabulary tests for this. The first test grabs all easy values, and the second test gives too easy, too medium, and too hard. Well, if that's the case, the easy test has low validity. It doesn't do a good job of testing what, what word you know, whereas this random assortment of questions does give a good test of the information that is known. It, it's cross-section, and so the validity of the test will be quite high because it measures all aspects. So with content, if you consider the functions modeling test that you just to took, um, as a teacher, we always try to achieve content validity on any test that, the, that we give. But the question is, is the test you just took, does it accurately measure the material? That's the question of validity. Um, teachers may have a certain opinion different than the students, but that's validity. Uh, that we're considering content validity specifically. And finally, the last validity thing we consider is criteria validity. And we determine how well one variable predicts a certain outcome of another variable. So imagine that you're part of a hiring company. It's hiring time and you sell anything is what your name of your company is. And so you're gonna give us a, a sales competency test. You come along and you take the test for some of the people who come who you're hiring and you get candidates that score above average on this test. They are your superior superstar sales employees, and there's six of them. People who score below average, you still end up hiring them, but they end up being your poor salespeople, and there's red. If the test produces, if they do well, and they get superstar, and they are shown a year later that they are the superstar employees, and they've shown that they're poor employees, then you can say that there is high criterion validity on this test because this test predicted accurately what these employees were gonna, were gonna be. However, if I gave the test and people who got above average and then below average, if the above average people, if these were the salespeople or some were the superstar employees and some were not, the same with here, then we would say there was low criterion validity because it was not a very good predictor of how these student, how these salespeople would do. So this happens all the time. If you consider last year in grade 10, as a math department, we tried to determine which would be the best fit math class for you as students. And we used various criteria to consider that. You guys take your class and in two years time, you will take your IB test. If you are successful in the class you've chosen, then our criteria has high criteria validity. Okay, if you're unsuccessful overall, then our criteria, we need to look at our criteria and change it. And so that, because if you don't, aren't successful overall, then we have low criteria validity and we have to reassess our ability to predict your IB scores based upon what you've done in grade 10. So that's another example of criteria validity. So let's put this all together. Validity and reliability are different, but they're definitely related. What we always want to do is we want high reliability and high validity. If we do that, consider a dartboard. If we are able to do that, what happens with our dartboard is we come along the dartboard. If we try and get the center, we are able to consistently hit the target and we're always hitting the target consistently. If the reliability is high and the validity is low, well, we're trying to hit the target. What happens is we're reliably always hitting up here. So it has high reliability, but my validity is measuring the wrong Thing. So there's high reliability, low validity. If we consider high validity, low, well, this is impossible. In order to be valid, a measure first has to be reliable. So having a high validity 
and a low reliability is impossible. And then finally, a low low. Well, that means yeah, it's very unreliable and it's very, very invalid. This is me as a dart player. I am not reliable and my skills are not valid for assessing my abilities. And so I am all over the place. And so this we do not want. Ideally, when we are doing research, we are trying to get this scenario here. It is challenging to do.